लिस्ट इम्पॉर्टंट फॉर्म्युलाज फॉर व्हर्टिकल शाफ्ट विथ सिंगल रोटर सॉल्व वन प्रॉब्लेम ऑन अनडॅम्प्ड व्हर्टिकल शाफ्ट विथ सिंगल रोटर Let us understand some important formulas related to critical speeds of the shaft. Consider vertical shaft with single rotor which is supported in bearings. Due to non-uniform distribution of the rotor, the center of gravity point G is shifted by a distance e from the geometric center S. If we observe the vertical line which is in the form of dash and dot passing through S, then it is the center line. So we will show this distance as a E. Now as the rotor rotates with angular velocity omega, then this geometric center S is deflected by a distance y from this center line which is passing through O. Now why it is getting deflected? So it is deflected because of the centrifugal force which will act in radially outward direction but passing through G. So we will show this deflection of a point S. So initially point S lies on the center line but as the rotor rotates with angular velocity omega it is deflected by a distance Y from the center line and here the distance in between S and G we will keep as it is same that is the E. Now we will show the centrifugal force. So centrifugal force will pass through the point G and which is in the radially outward direction. Now how we can define the centrifugal force. So I will write here centrifugal force is equal to. Now mass of the rotor is M. Then the total distance in between the center line and point G is Y plus E multiplied by omega square because the rotor rotates with angular velocity omega. So this is the centrifugal force. So we will mention here the centrifugal force will act in radially outward direction passing through G. But the shaft is having stiffness K. So restoring force will also act in the opposite direction of the centrifugal force. And this restoring force will act through the point S. So we will show here the restoring force which is passing through the point S and which will act in radially inward direction. So this is restoring force. So how we can define this restoring force? So this point S is getting deflected by a distance Y. That is the displacement is equal to Y. And stiffness is K. Because shaft material is having stiffness K. So restoring force that is RF we will define as a stiffness multiplied by displacement. That is KY. So from this diagram we can say that centrifugal force is equal to restoring force. Now we will understand some important formulae. So first is static deflection in shaft. So we know that this shaft is supported in bearings. So there are two conditions. First is when both ends of the shaft are fixed. So we have formula delta is equal to WL cube by 192 EI. Where W is the weight, L is the length. I have shown here that is this vertical length. Then E is the modulus of elasticity of the shaft and I is the mass moment of inertia of the shaft. Then the second condition for simply supported shaft. So for simply supported shaft delta is equal to WL cube by 48 EI. Now there is the stiffness for the material of the shaft and which is known as K. So there is one relation in between the stiffness and this deflection delta. So K is equal to W by delta. So this relation is also important for the calculation. Now we will move to the next maximum bending moment. So how to calculate the maximum bending moment that is known as capital M to the base max which is equal to WL by 8. Then bending equation. So this is important equation. So sigma B. 
So sigma, that is the, this is the notation used for stress. So here bending stress is known as sigma to the base B. Sigma B by capital Y is equal to capital M by capital I. So sigma B is known as bending stress. Capital Y is equal to D by 2. Where D is known as the diameter of the shaft. So we have to take capital Y as a D by 2. Then M we know that the bending moment. So bending moment WL by 8. So which is the formula for maximum bending moment. And I is the mass moment of inertia for the shaft. So how to calculate the mass moment of inertia of the shaft. So it is equal to pi by 64 D raised to 4. So here D is the diameter of the shaft. For undamped vertical shaft with single rotor, we have formula y by e is equal to r square divided by 1 minus r square. So we can rewrite this formula as 1 divided by 1 by r square minus 1. Where r is known as the frequency ratio and r is equal to omega by omega n. Now for the damped shaft, we have formula y by e is equal to r square into magnification factor notation is ohm. So how we can write this magnification factor? So which is equal to 1 divided by under root 1 minus r square bracket square plus 2 zeta r bracket square. Given question, the vertical shaft of 5 mm diameter is 200 mm long and is supported in long bearings at its ends. The disc of mass 50 kg is attached to the center of the shaft. Neglecting any increase in stiffness due to the attachment of the disc to the shaft, find the critical speed of rotation and the maximum bending stress when the shaft is rotating at 75% of critical speed. The center of disc is 0.25 mm from the geometric axis of the shaft. E is equal to 200 Gn per meter square. Let us understand given data. Diameter of the shaft 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter. Then the length of this vertical shaft L is equal to 0 0.2 meter. Mass of the rotor M is equal to 50 kilogram. Then the shaft rotates 75% of the critical speed. So for the critical speed we will use the notation NC. So N1 is equal to 75% of NC which is equal to 0 0.75 NC. Then the distance in between this center of gravity point and geometric center is given. That is the distance E is equal to 0 0.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter. Then the modulus of elasticity for the shaft material 200 giga newton per meter square. But standard unit is newton per meter square. So we can write here 200 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square. Now we will move to the first question. We have to find out critical speed of rotation. So critical speed of rotation is known as NC. So we have to find out this NC. So there is one relation in between this critical speed of rotation and delta. So delta is the deflection delta. Now if we observe the question, it is given that the shaft is supported in long bearings. So the bearings are long. So it is similar to the shaft which is fixed at its both ends. So we have to use the formula to calculate delta for the shaft fixed at its both ends. So how to calculate this? So for that we have to first calculate I which is the mass moment of inertia for the shaft. So what is the value of I for the shaft? So it is pi by 64 into d raised to 4. Where d is the diameter of the shaft and it is mentioned in the question. So we will calculate it as 30.67 into 10 raised to minus 12 meter raised to 4. Now we will move to calculate delta. So delta is equal to wl cube divided by 192 ei. This is the formula for the shaft fixed at its both ends. 
Now W that is M into G. So M is given 50, G is 9.8, then L is given 0 0.2, so 0 0.2 cube, 192 into E. So E is elasticity, that is 200 into 10 raised to 9 multiplied by I. So I is 30.67 into 10 raised to minus 12. So here is 12. So when we calculate this, then we will get the answer 3.33 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter. Now with this value of delta we will put for the formula to calculate NC. So NC is equal to 0 0.4985 divided by under root delta. So this is the formula to calculate the critical speed. And this critical speed the unit is RPS that is revolution per second. So when we put the value we will get the answer 8.6377 RPS. We have calculated deflection delta in the shaft because of the load W. Now this deflection delta is known as the static deflection. So we can say that for the static condition load is W and which creates deflection delta in the shaft. Now when the shaft starts rotating then it is subjected to dynamic load. And this dynamic load is W1. So for the dynamic condition, we will consider here the load is W1. And which also creates the deflection. Now if we observe the second diagram, then this point S is getting shifted by a distance Y. So the deflection in the shaft that is equal to Y when there is the dynamic condition. Because in the second diagram, this rotor or the shaft rotates with angular velocity omega. So for the dynamic condition load is W1 and then the deflection is equal to Y. Now we will move to the second question. Maximum bending stress of the shaft. That is we have to find out the sigma B. So notation is sigma B. So for that we have one formula. That is for the bending equation. Sigma B by Y which is equal to M by I. For sigma B we have to find out Y. That is we know value of Y is D by 2. Which is equal to M. That is the bending moment M divided by I. So how to calculate I. That is mass moment of inertia for the shaft. That is pi by 64 D raised to 4. So when we simplify this here. D D is getting cancelled and then. Capital M is equal to pi by 32 d cube into sigma b. So this is one equation to find out this bending moment. So for the bending moment we will get this first equation. Now we have second equation for the maximum bending moment. So for the maximum bending moment we have equation w1 l by 8. Now why this load w1 because the shaft is in the rotating or in dynamic condition and that's why we have to take m max is equal to w1 into l by 8. So this is the second equation for the bending moment. Now we will equate these two equations then we will get w1 into l that is 0 0.2 divided by 8 is equal to pi by 32 d that is 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 cube into sigma b. So we will get the equation in the form of sigma b and w1. So w1 is equal to 0 0.4908 into 10 raised to minus 6 into sigma b newton. If we observe the relation between load and deflection for the static and dynamic condition, then we will cross multiply these terms. So we can write here w into y is equal to w1 into delta. So we will write here y is equal to w1 by w multiplied by delta. 
so we will put the value so what is the value of w1 so we have calculated here 0.4908 into 10 raised to minus 6 sigma b w that is mentioned in the question that is m into g that is 50 into 9.81 into deflection delta so static deflection we have calculated 3.33 into 10 raised to minus 3 so when we calculate we will get the y 3.33 into 10 raised to minus 12 sigma b meter now for undamped vertical shaft we have formula in terms of y because this shaft no damper is provided so we can say that it is undamped vertical shaft so what is that formula y by e is equal to 1 divided by 1 by r square minus 1 where r is known as frequency ratio and which is equal to omega by omega n but now if we observe the given data we have the relation in between speeds that is the shaft rotate at speed n1 and which is equal to 0 0.75 times of nc so for this question we can say that this shaft rotates with angular velocity omega 1 so instead of omega we will write omega 1 by omega n and it is equivalent to the speed that is n1 by nc so instead of omega by omega n we will write or we will replace the value of r as a n1 by nc so when we put here n1 by nc square then if we simplify then this nc will go here in this instead of this one so again we will simplify this so we will write here 1 divided by nc by n1 bracket square minus 1 now we know that n1 is equal to 0 0.75 nc so we will put here 0 0.75 nc so this nc nc is getting cancelled so here 1 divided by 1 by 0 0.75 bracket square minus 1 and on the left hand side what is the value of y so value of y is 3.33 into 10 raised to minus 12 sigma b and what is the value of e so that is mentioned in the question 0 0.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 so there is only one unknown term that is sigma b and sigma b that is the bending stress is equal to 96.45 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square